This is going to be one of the biggest years of my life, but I'm here for it. I've prepared the best that I possibly can to put myself in the best position this year. Trust me when I say this. The time is now. What's up everybody, welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is the first video back in London. You can't tell, but we're in London again, and I am so happy to be back. Uh, I think I was getting to that point in prep where it was getting really, really hard. We're getting really, really lean, and I was in a very monotonous, lonely routine where I was training on my own. Don't get me wrong, like I, uh, you know, I, I'm motivated and, and I can get it done, but when you're on your own, there's no atmosphere, you don't see anyone. Um, yeah, don't get me wrong, it's a good place to get shit done, but also uh, it definitely paid a little bit of a price i'm a little bit tired because of it but we are back now yesterday was the first session with the bbc if you don't follow me on instagram follow me on instagram at josh bridgman and you will see behind the scenes of the bbc today we have one half of the b and c b brightman and we are doing a pull day because tom has legs and we're going to talk about how to get a bigger back with an ifbb pro in a gym full of people So first up, we've got a deadlift, or my take on a deadlift. I don't go all the way to the floor, because for me, when I go all the way to the floor, my, my lower back starts to creak in, and it just destroys me, and I've got many, many lower back problems, so I try and keep it as safe as possible. Um, so we're just gonna build up one plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, to four and a half plate, and then I'm gonna see how I feel. Um, I've been doing over 200 the last few weeks, so I do wanna keep it way above that. Um, but you'll see this type of deadlift. It's not. A, it's like an odd. It's like a hybrid of all of them. It's not pretty, and I wouldn't put a label on it. <laughs> um, but this is uh, the best that I can do in deadlift because I am shooting sure deadlifts. Right, so before we get into this, this is 220 on there, five plates. The reason why we're doing our deadlift first is because it's the most neurologically demanding. I don't know why I'm pointing in my brain. Central nervous systemly demanding. So we want to do it when we're fresh. It's a big bang for your butt. It's a lot of stimulus, but it's a lot of fatigue. So for me, I'm only going to do this one top set and then we're going to call it. That means I need to put everything into it. And it also means that I've got to do this when I'm fresh. So this is why we're doing it first. Big bang for your buck exercise first. Compound exercise deadlift. Uh, let's get fucking nasty. Alright, I was gonna just sack that off and not put that clip in, but... This the reality of prep. I took a leap that I shouldn't have. I did 210 for six last week. So I tried 220 thinking I'm going to get like five. I'm stupid. Don't do that. Really, really stupid. I got pepped up. Camera. Stupid. I was just going to cut it out. But no, I'm going to do a back offset. I'm going to put 200 back on. And I'm going to see if I can get five or six. And uh, learn the lesson. Get to the workout. With Joe, who is up on the track. All right, so heavy load was out of the way. Now we're going to come on some pretty much isolation station prime the lats really really nicely back on the nautilus pull down which is like a free hand motion d-handle gloriousness i miss this machine so much if you've got this machine you should be doing it um, but this is going to work its lat through the full range of motion we're really going to focus on driving elbows forward here rather than that backwards so that we can get uh, in the most contracted position as possible because we know that contraction that contracted position is going to get harder and harder and harder to get to as we get more fatigued so we want to maximize that range right now which is what we're going to do with IFB Pro Prime in the background. Let's get into it. So all of these sets, top set, 
six to eight reps. I did about nine on that first one. Uh, back offset is always a little bit higher. We know we grow over different rep ranges. We know we actually grow from between six and 30 reps. So we want to be going across all of those rep ranges. So we're going to go slightly higher now, 12 to 15. Back off and wait. So we work really, really efficiently in a vertical plane, driving on that nautilus ball. We're now gonna do the same thing for a horizontal plane. We're gonna get nice and short. We've got the chest, the chest support here so we can dig in. Uh, we're gonna just do the neutral grip where it feels natural. We're gonna pull towards our upper back a little bit more, uh, almost simulating a T-bar row, because the T-bar row is shit here, but this is the Life Fitness Machine Row. Two sets on here as well. So we had a really, really good couple of sets on there. So that vertical, that horizontal plane is smashed to bits. Uh, our ability to get short is, and by short I mean contracted, is now harder. Right? Like I said at the beginning of this workout. So now we're going to create an exercise that creates more drop off than usual. You'll see a lot of people do this seated. We're going to do it standing. We're going to pull back and you're going to see that we're basically bringing the weight closer to the axis of rotation so it drops off more in a favorable range for the lat so we're fatigued a little bit now we want this to drop off where we're, where we're tired and then just exhaust that length in the mid range before we come into our final lat exercise um, for a couple of sets again we're taking these to failure we're trying to recruit high motor unit thresholds so lots and lots of muscle fibers get recruited the closer you get to failure we're trying to recruit as many of those as possible so this is a stood up you know that are all I'm a strength for Come on then, and again, let's go. Drive. Drive. Tiny little bit of me. Come on then. Come on then. Oh. finish off uh, our lats with just like a, a neutral-ish grip pull down. Honestly, I'm fucked. I think Joe's fucked as well. And I just wanted to get it done because at this point we work real hard. Uh, and the lats are completely milked for what's worth, you know. Beyond that is almost junk volume that you don't need to do. And you just dig further into that recovery and fatigue that you need to kind of f focus on afterwards. So now we're just going to finish off of arms, um, a little bit of biceps, um, and that's going to finish off our pull day and how to get a bigger back. We'll talk a little bit, a bit, we'll talk a little bit, a bit about how to summarize it and how to bring this to a close. Um, and we'll do a little pose with the back after some biceps. Right, 
So we kind of wanted to leave that a little bit raw. Just so you guys can get a feel of the gym again. People in there, training with people, the atmosphere. Obviously really, really good to be back. I can't, I'm so excited um, for everyone to be making gains again. So just to summarize how I think that you should get a big back because I think it's really important. I think I've got some ideas that, that maybe people don't think about. So first of all, your biggest bang for your butt, your biggest fatiguing exercise I generally would put first. Your deadlift, your barbell row, anything that's gonna take any kind of spinal load is gonna demand a little bit more from your central nervous system. So I would recommend doing those first, depending on your tolerance for recovery for those one or two sets. For me, it's one set, and we fared miserably today. <laughs> um, but that is what it is. Then I'd recommend doing something that's gonna challenge you in the short range, the most contracted range, and that pretty much goes for every muscle. Because we know that the ability to get fully contracted gets harder and harder as we go through the workout because we build fatigue, and the muscle's not as strong to get into that position. Even more so with, with lats, you know? Um, so, and you'll notice that maybe sometimes when you're getting tired, you, you end up doing those partial reps. That's because you're just, you're muscle cannot get fully contracted anymore because it's it's so taxed so we'll tax that first and then we want to look at then we want to look at moving very very efficiently in a vertical plane which is why we did the nautilus pull down then we want to look at working very very efficiently in a horizontal plane and looking at a little bit of an upper back pull um so that's why we did the the, uh, the life fitness row and then just something to obliterate the lats for a full range of motion the d handles and then also the um also creating something to if it is later on in the workout, we're creating a drop off where it's hard to get contracted, which is what we did in the stood up row. That's enough for me. You've worked the vertical, you've worked the horizontal, you know, you've taken it to failure. If you're taking, if you're not taking it to failure, to true failure, you can of course put these reps up and these sets up to maybe three or four, but if you are working to failure, true failure, I would say that that, that amount of sets is pretty difficult. Maybe you've got one or two more than me, but I wouldn't say you've got too many more. So I think that's the best way to do it. And then of course, doing your arms at the end, because we want, you know, we don't want to be obliterating your biceps before a back workout. It doesn't make sense. Um, and that's how I've always kind of trained. That's how I've think thought about things the first movement always being somewhat of a primer thinking about working that short range and then getting into the bulk of your workout for those heavy lifts so i hope you guys enjoyed it a little bit more raw um and of course you can have a little bit look at, look at the back definitely coming in we're eight we're just under eight weeks out seven and a half weeks out now and my back is finally starting to be there i think we're probably a couple weeks maybe three weeks away from being fully stage ready touch wood and then we can start feeding the body and 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 coming off the cardio a little bit but we'll see how we get on there's no excuse until we're all completely shredded that's the pool workout that's the video hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment subscribe we'll see you very soon peace and love everybody